Guys, what is up? It is Wednesday evening for me. It could be later for you. I don't know. We are in a great spot today. Let's just jump in and, yep, there we are. We already have a cat in our lap. She will not leave us alone. She's literally laying on my keyboard. Like, I cannot type. My my hand is very gently gracing her butt uh, because she's she's sitting on my hand. So this is going to be really fun to try and do pack openings with that. And Mike, there's a little bit of glare in the corner. I thought I fixed that, but I guess not. Um... Don't mind it. It's just part of the background. It's part of the stars until I can figure out why that's why that's like that. I do apologize. Uh, first of all, Steve Play Fusion, Steve Play Fusion. Thank you very much for the follow, man. Welcome to my cl- my uh, my thundercloud. Wow. Um, we are gonna have a a great show for you today. Today is Warhammer Wednesday. Uh, is what I'm officially calling it because I'm just it it rolls off the tongue so well. There goes our panther. There we go. Nope, she's right back. Okay, she's right here. Oh, she's so adorable, but she wants all the attention, and I need I need my desk to reveal these amazing packs. I was I was fortunate enough to get my hands on two boxes of Savagery because Savagery looked really amazing. I've got to play all of the uh, the single player demos for the game online. I was able to just jump in and play those. The constructed decks they made were amazing. Uh, Sylvanth, I am in love with the Sylvanth uh, clan family, whatever it is you have with them. Uh, I, I love Order, first of all. Order was probably my favorite one that I've played. I know I play a lot of Destruction, but I do love Order. It, I'm, I'm a Paladin player at heart. Uh, I played Paladin in uh, mostly Hearthstone. I, I did build a Paladin in World of Warcraft, so like that whole whole like uh, j- the Justice thing really, really, really fits my motif. It's what I like to do. So today, you know, Savagery came out like Saturday, right? It was digitally scanned. You were able to play it on Monday. So I'm a little bit behind. I'm a little behind. I haven't seen what people have built. Uh, I've just gotten kind of ideas of just from the test decks that obviously have come out. Um, that I really want to be able to build stuff. I did see, however, that we can't craft any new cards until like the 25th or something like that. Which, I mean, it, it makes sense. I mean, if you're able to buy the physical cards... Um, buy them and then like for the first week the people who spent the money on the physical cards can play them um and then otherwise you just open the packs open the packs open the packs and then eventually once you get to know the game then you can graph the card so i can see that i can see how they why they did that so that makes sense to me um just a few things giving you a heads up uh I, like i said i do have a cat her paw is right here uh she is laying on her back wanting me to touch that bear trap that is her tummy and the lord knows she'll bite me if i do um so we're gonna we're gonna try and avoid her while dealing with plastic bags and cards and knowing my stream it'll be like Ro- rosie you got you just gotta move come on just move so i can i can get this done uh, i don't have the game open right now per se because i have my ipad on a stand here with the camera so that when i show you the cards i'm just gonna pop them down in a pile get them scanning right away so i can put them in the game as soon as possible so i can actually go into the game and play because I want to play with the cards. I don't want to spend like 15, 20 minutes afterwards. Okay, guys, I'm going to take an intermission while I scan all these. No, I want to reveal them, put them down in a pile right below the camera, scan them in. I did I did notice with the cards that I got prior to Savagery that Dread, Dread is really finicky. And I don't know if it's just because it's like a purple with the black dots. It's got to find the color scheme properly. So like, oh, I hope the lighting on my desk is okay um, for that to happen. So we'll cross our fingers and see what we can get scanned in. I hope it's fun. I hope it's a lot of fun. I can only anticipate it being amazingly fun. Uh... Also, me and my girlfriend did order Buffalo Wild Wings, so if, like, the doorbell rings, it's our Buffalo Wild Wings being delivered. Um, isn't it called Death, Not Dread? Wranglethor, you're absolutely right. It is called Death. Uh, that That's my Light Seekers showing out. Uh, it is Death. We, dro- we got all amazing Dread card reveals today for Light Seekers, and I really want to talk about those. Should I talk about them now or, at, like, before... Before or after the pack openings. I feel like I should talk about them now. Right? I should probably talk about them now. Um, let's... There's, there's my amazing card reveals that I had for there. Let's do this. Oh, Lord. Okay. I gotta get the images. The images are like... What can I add here? Hold on. I, I do apologize for this. We just go ahead and, yeah, we'll just add that source in. And then we'll just kind of whoop, make it not as big as, not as big as me. Um, so yeah, we'll just, we'll just talk a little bit while I get these cards all sorted out. You know what? You know, I'll just do this until I just put them in a folder. Captain Rotbeard. 
Captain Rockbeard is amazing. I, I really like the dynamic of this card. My girlfriend also pointed out that I say certain words quite frequently. Uh, and she's made a drinking game out of it. So if I ever have a 12 hour stream, we're just going to get sloshed. Uh, but back to uh, Captain Rockbeard. It is another Poison Supremacy hero. Deal one damage to target if you play a Creeble card and an Undeath card in the same turn. This can only trigger once per turn. Uh, we are seeing a lot of Creeble support. A lot of Creeble support already. There's already a Creeble card that is a buff that deals two damage, and if you played an Undead card this turn, you get two healing. So we've already seen some Creeble and Undead synergies go on. Um... I don't know how effectively that one damage ping will be compared to a lot of other heroes. I know Lugnut was really easy to get the one damage ping because you just equip two items. Boom, it's always of your turn. Starseer Tundra just needed different alignments, right? This one needs two specific families back to back to back. So I, I really like him. The The whole one ping is really, uh, it's really versatile to get through a lot of stuff like that. And one damage could make or break a game sometimes, right? So... I like him, though. I like him a lot. I think he's really cool, especially with the cards that we got for Dread today. There's a lot of really cool Kreeble. Uh, I don't think... I'm not sure we got Undead. But there's a lot of really cool Kreeble cards. Um, but yeah, I like, I like this guy. I like him. He's going to be really fun. Um, I don't know, per se... Those are my headphones. You're kicking my headphones out of my ear, honey. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you just jumped right on my headphone cord. You almost pulled them out of my ears. Um, I don't know if he's going to compete that well with, like, Grimus. Uh, I know Grimus is just really buff-heavy. She did almost rip out of my head. Woo! Um, hey, Rose 8. She likes to eat plastic, which is the whole reason I was like, that's my cord. Stop biting my cord. She's just being a naughty kitty right now. I will toss you out of the room. If you don't behave, I will toss you out of the room. I'm trying to be a live streamer right now. I'm trying to entertain the people. You're being naughty. Sorry, guys. Um, all right, one sec, I gotta, this cat is eating my plastic bag, I can't allow that, it's, it's not good for her, one sec, sorry about this, I do apologize. All right, guys, sorry about that. I really, really do apologize. Um, yeah, but the, uh, I have a plastic bag here so I can put the cards, the card plastic stuff in them. And I did it for easy cleanup and access, stuff like that, to make it, you know, nice and clean. And then the cats just start biting the bag and tearing it up, and we can't have her eating plastic. For some reason, it's like a delicacy, and I don't know why. Um, but yeah, but, uh, Captain Rockbeard. I really like this guy. I like him. Um, he's he's going to really help the Undead family, too. Uh, I know that Undead... Um, the people in Undead, they, I think there's only, like, one, and it's Talia? Shadeborn, I want to say, is the Undead hero for Dread, like, the main one for uh, Dread. Um, so having another one is is really good. Just having another one that works with the Undead family is really good. It'll help kind of switch up heroes and make it so you, if you're playing Undead, you can play something better. Um, we'll just have to see. We'll have to see how well the one damage ping really comes into play. Um, but I have high hopes for it. I have high hopes for it. I think it's going to do really well. Gut Belt Shaman. I am really excited about this card, first of all. A, because it involves discarding. I love discarding. It's amazing. Um, it is a Creeble buff. It is a Poison buff, so that's awesome right there. Damage from your Poison cards bypasses damage-reducing effects. I immediately think this is be slammed right into Grimus. It's a Poison buff, A, and it makes all your other Poison buffs, like, in, like, uh, they... They bypass damage, right? They're getting past Mountain Fort. They're getting past Bubble Fish. All this stuff. Like, it's small tick damage. So put down one Bubble Fort, you block like four buffs in a row. Put this down, it's like, no, 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 no. Every single one is a Spectral Widow. Every single one. And if it all bypasses, you can then increase their damage, right? It just increases it. And it's it's not just Poison Buffs. It's Poison Cards, which means that Mantic Spitter now has bypassing effects. Uh, it means that... Uh, what other Poison Tack cards have we gotten lately? Uh, I know it's the, the, is it the, the Corrosive Spirit? Is that the three damage draw card? Is that a poison card? I want to say it is. I want to say it is. That's that's also going to bypass damage. Um, but then you also have, when you discard a card, restart this buff. Which means that it's not just for, it's not just for four turns. It is probably for a plethora of turns. 
if they're really utilizing cards that benefit from discarding now. Before we just got, hey, you know, you discard a card to do this. If you do this, you can discard a card or discard a card for this. We're finally getting cards on board that react to you discarding. That's awesome. I'm super excited for cards like that. I'm super excited for cards that literally say, hey, if you discard and this is on the board, you get an added benefit. Like, this will stay out longer for all your poison stuff to deal more damage. It's it's that kind of stuff that, like I said, really gets me excited for the discard mechanic. I've played discard in Hearthstone in Magic. I've played it, I, I played a little bit in Warhammer, and I really hope to make a discard deck in Warhammer with the Sylvanth. Um, that it's just that they, they there's so many fun uh, tools for that high risk, high reward. Like, all right, you can ditch this card to get this benefit. But then if you build it properly, there's a lot of cards that utilize, like, no, no, it's okay, it's actually good to go to the graveyard. Or, like, it doesn't actually go to the graveyard, it comes into play, or it gets shuffled back into your deck, or a whole bunch of other things I can do with this card. It's a really good mechanic, really solid foundation that's found in almost any card game I've ever seen. So I'm really excited that uh, Play Fusion is jumping on that bandwagon to give discard to us and make it work. And I, I cross my fingers because they, they seem to make it really work in Warhammer. So that gives me high hopes that they're also doing a really good job at making it in uh, Light Seekers. We've only seen, what, now we've got four cards today, so we're at 60, no, we're at 73, and it's 130 plus, I think some people said that the uh, the core box that's opening up is also probably in included in the in Awakening as well, so we'll probably get no more than 130, but we're about halfway through the set, and we've already seen some amazing cards, so I'm really excited for Gut Bell Shaman, I think it's going to be a great card for Dread, for Discard alone, uh, well, not Discard alone, because it has to be for Dread, because uh, it's Poison cards, right? You, unless you're running more poison, like have poison heavy. Gut Belt Shaman is just really good. I, I like the card. Uh, and then Poison Mist. Oh, this makes me so happy. Uh, you get to damage your opponent 3 3 2 2. It's, it's poison. It's what it also does. But you remove one beast buff from your target for four turns. And beasts outside of elementals are the most widespread family that is in Light Seekers right now, right? That's a Thunder Slug that you get to remove just by playing Poison Mist. Um,. There's a bunch of beast buffs in nature. Obviously, there's some really good beast uh, buffs in nature. Storm is starting to get. Uh, Storm. Storm already has some really decent beast buffs. Uh, Astral's starting to get beast buffs. Like there's there's a lot of be beast buffs. And poison mist is just like yeah. If you're playing beasts, I'm running poison mist like in my sideboard. If you're playing physical or just main decking it, if it depends on what deck comes out. They're they're building cards that are very situational, and because of that, it's diversifying the game a whole lot, which is really what the game needs. The game has had so much, hey, it deals five damage, or hey, remove one buff, or like all this stuff, where it's just it's very common for one card to do a lot of things that I think pigeonholing and diversifying certain cards will help build the the tech cards that you need to build certain decks. Uh, it'll help change the meta constantly. Because it's like, oh, yeah, Beast Rise, then Poison Mist is going to be played. If Beasts aren't that popular, Poison Mist won't be played. It's it's very situational, and because of it, it helps for a, a very more adapting meta, as opposed to the cards like, right now, it's just Fumbling Alchemist, six damage, two damage. It's like, yeah, I'll take that damage. It's not like six damage if you control something, or something like we have to build a certain family-oriented. And then there's cards that stop the certain family orientation. So it's really nice to see uh, a combo like this. Three poison, it's very difficult to pay for, obviously. Uh, but, I mean, you're going to save it if you're playing a beast opponent. If not, you're going to just save it for combo payment. It's it's really cool. I like the I like the combo off. I think it's really good. Uh, it's definitely going to see play if beasts are on the rise, as Shibes so well put it. And our last card we got is the Hired Saboteur. This card... Oh my word, guys. This card is amazing. First of all, yeah, two turns to deal five damage. That's that's okay. I'll wait two turns to deal five damage. The added benefit of it makes it so much better. It's like, hey, yeah, I got a wall down. I got a mountain fort. I got a, uh, uh, what's the um, the tech one that's uh, four clunky corners, two, one, 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 that prevents the damage, and then when it expires, it draws a card. It, it's stuff like that that consistently sits out and prevents damage from like buffs and attacks and stuff like that. That it's like, hey, cool, five damage. Mind you, if you put, like, two walls out, like, two graveyards, two uh, bubble fishes, stuff that, like, m almost like the Mill and Fatigue are building, this one's just like, yeah, it deals five. Right now, there's only one def or one buff card that prevents more than three damage, uh, and that is the Tech uh, Bulwark. Blastproof Defender. I think that I think that's right. That sounds about right. Is the Bulwark. Bulwark prevents seven damage. So Hired Saboteur removes that one. But then it could remove, like, two uh, Defend, or, like, wall cards essentially if you put them down both in the same turn like cool i'm just having a really big defense and i can bring them all back it's like yeah, hired saboteur if they're staying out they're gone i know so you remove hired saboteur and if you do it's like well you wasted a buff removal on a card that was going to remove your buff so it's really cool that we have like a buff that can remove a specific buff if it's out otherwise it's just five damage five damage is really good i, I can see people running like just one of this 
in a main deck just to remove those walls, those pesky stuff that they're losing to control. Um, I think it works really well. Uh, you're definitely going to see this card being played. I like 100% guarantee this card is going to be played a lot. And I am excited for it. I am really excited for this card. This is amazing. I love the art too. It's just a little Kreeble who's like literally has a giant bomb in front of him. And it almost looks like he's trying to fit more bombs into this bomb. Like one explosion was not good enough. You need to put bombs in your bomb to blow up everything that could be stopping your path. It's really cool. I like the art. I like the card. Great tech card. Great just card all around. I think it's good. I think it's amazing. This card is going to be awesome. And it's a Kreeble. So, booyah. Also, thank you to Freshen, who keeps me up to date on my own Discord channel here. Because uh, I'm at work most of the time when these card reveals come out. So, he's awesome about being able to put those right up and be like, hey, I got you, man. I got you. So, Freshen, thank you very much for being able to post those on my uh, on my Discord. I approve of it. I appreciate it very much. Let me just get rid of this. There's a nice little sound for it, isn't it? Uh, so, let's go into the Let's Talk, guys. Let's go into the Let's Talk. And let's jump right into Warhammers. Right into Warhammer. Makes me think of Piglet if he was in the Apocalypse. So, who's Winnie the Pooh? Or, who, better yet, who's Eeyore? Who's Eeyore in an Apocalypse? Who's the guy that's just like, I saw this coming. But, oh, guys, so many savagery packs. It's it's like, it's hopefully, hopefully the foils don't show up bad, but I cannot wait to open these. I cannot wait to open these. Like I said, I got my iPad here just for quick access and access to it. These packs are a lot more difficult to open than the, the other ones that I have acquired, but I still got it. Still got it with ease. Now, since we do have two boxes and I want to actually play the game, I'll probably just end up showing the rares. I'll say the names of the cards that I get. Uh, I, I honestly haven't been able to look or read at a whole bunch of these. So when we're deck building, I probably will need some help if any of you guys have played this game and are willing to help me. Um, if not, that's cool too. But uh, give give me a break when I'm like probably spending a little bit deck building, which is why I want to go through these card packs reveals really quick um, so that I can get into the deck building, get into playing today. Um I also do have B-dubs waiting for me, so I, I will, I'll probably go get that eventually. Maybe like after, after about half of these packs, I'll get my B-dubs real quick so that I can eat them before it gets cold. Because I think it just came. I think it just came. And B-dubs is delicious, guys. Buffalo Wild Wings. It's it's tasty. It's not nutritious, but it's tasty, which is all I care about. You know what? As we're doing this, why don't we just put on, just bring bring Night back, back up. Let's get a little music in the background because it feels kind of dull. Let's just get a little nice ambiance music in the background from Nightbot. We'll turn down the volume on it just a little bit so it's not overpowering, but I, I like just a little bit of a little bit of music. Let me know if it's too quiet if you want me to turn it up a little bit. But uh let's begin, shall we? Glorious Afflictions. It is a Chaos spell. Wow, I, I got I got to remember these names. What? No, Kenny G. Ranglethor. I mean, if you want to start blasting Kenny G, go for it, man. You you rock out to that. I am all for it. Uh, glorious or glorious afflictions. It'll be played by a demon champion. Very very uh, unique. I like it. Damage to your target increases by one for each highlighted unit. Six damage after two turns. It's a spell. I like it. Now let's see if my uh, my camera scanning works here. Beautiful, it works. We have battle tactics. Actually, since the cat's not in here, let me let me move this just a little more in front of me so it's not right off to the side. Hopefully, yeah, you guys can see it like right off camera because I mean it's gonna be right in front of me. It's gonna be right here. So let's let's put that right there. Oh, that's really far away. I'm gonna see if I can just. Okay, that works. That works. We have itchy nuisance. Lith dryad. Corners one to two, gain health. Corner three, damage your opponent. It's a Sylvanth. I'm super excited for Sylvanth, guys. I'm super excited. Vigor Necris. Moon's Moon Mad Stabas. God, those 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 uh, grots. Dude, those grots were awesome. Roused to Wrath. They are so roused. They are aroused right now. We got Flowering Dryad. This is this is an awesome card, guys. It is X2 damage to your opponent, gain health. But also, when this card is discarded, or when you discard this card, you gain two health. So it's like that added benefit for when you discard it through a discard effect. You get a bonus added to it. We got the Hunting Glaive Wraith Stalkers. And our rare is Morgost Harbringer. 
Harbinger. Wow, that is... That, with my green screen, that is really bad because that is a lot of green. Um, wow, I am so sorry about that. <laughs> uh, let me let me just see if I can if I can plop in just another. Another webcam here. Can I just I can't do that, can I? That that was really bad. I do apologize. Um Yeah, it's it's the green screen. I will hold on. Let me go into the filters and just turn that green screen off. Cause that, that card is really green. There we go. There we go, guys. Alright. Alright, we're back. Now now, with that being said, I have the Morgast Harbinger. That is awesome. That is awesome art. And it's very green, but that is awesome art. Uh, what it does is, 1-1-1, one, 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 corner 1, deploy one Risen unit from your discard pile onto a highlighted champion. Normal restrictions apply. A corners 2 and 3, damage to your opponent. So it's a, it's, a, it's a Risen unit that puts in another Risen unit when it comes into play. Then just deals some damage. That looks really interesting, too. We got Spewing Pestilence. We got Rotbringer's Sorcerer. And then we got a Foil Cycle of Life. Gain four health, move two Sylvanth units from your discard pile to your hand. Oh, we finally, we got a Sylvanth Blessing right off the bat. I'm excited. I am super excited. Let me know if the, uh, the pack reveal stream just gets boring and we can just talk about anything and I'll just like scan these while we're talking. I don't need to say all the card names and whatnot. What do you guys, have you guys been playing? The Warhammer game. Have you guys played Warhammer yet? Have you been able to test out the free app? Got Spectral Grasp. Let me see if I can, can I do this one. There we go. Because I'd love to hear what you guys have been playing. Curse Splat. Interesting. Erupting Song. Silent Communion. Curse of Years. Ferocious Direwolves. Shive says, I play Sylvanth in the miniature game. I enjoy playing them. Oh, how do they play in the miniatures? Do they play... Or how, how, how are their uh, attack styles, I guess? Blessings of the Forest. Whirling Death. Trample Underfoot. I like that card. Trample Underfoot. Three damage to your opponent. You can discard a card to return to your hand. It says, I'm just getting into it. A buddy and I are buying starter decks physically. Awesome, Shives. Awesome. Well, my rare for today... Is the slobbering beast of Nurgle? That is just a disgusting tentacle monster right there. That is gross, but he's awesome. What he does is X three three. He's a demon unit. As this enters play, discard one card from your hand. Damage to your opponent. Highlighted units are dormant, so the unit right across him just goes, doesn't do anything, which is already amazing. We got face of the grave. We got a putrid blight lord, and then our foil is the icefall yetis. It's a beast. That increases damage based on beast units next to it. I'm loving it. I am loving it. Demons of Raffle. The Demons of Raffle. So, uh, uh, Shibes, I guess, have you played the, have you played digitally? Have you, like, just done the starter stuff on digital and gotten a, a sense for the game? If so, if so, do tell me which, uh, which army you want to be a part of. Got the Venomous Spider Riders. Starving Vergeist. Another Battle Tactics. Oh, hold on. We're on a Death card. It's going to take a little bit to scan that in. I keep telling you, I'm like, I don't know why it's taking so long to scan this in. Technical difficulties. Hopefully they're gone. Yeah, Death cards. The, the scanning just doesn't like Death cards. Just does not. I'm going to try and just put it in my hand closer to the camera. Maybe closer to the camera works. It is not. It is not. It might be the lighting. It might be the lighting. I'll I'll put a pile over here for cards that just don't scan. Another battle tactics. Kind of a bummer. I wish they would start scanning it. Oh, am I just gonna have to like restart my? Is this gonna be that way? I have two boxes to do, guys. And if I have to sit here and try and like scan them all in, I'm gonna be super. I'm a super mad. Impenetrable hide looks really interesting. Looks really interesting. I just unlocked the starter decks, but I think I'm gonna play. Gonna like playing chaos. Chaos does seem really cool. Chaos does seem really cool. It's very, like, aggressive, removing your own units to do beneficial things and all this other stuff. So, I, I like it a lot. I think Chaos can be a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun with Destruction and Order lately. I haven't really tried Death 
Mostly because from what I've been seeing in death, it's like... Uh, by the way, that was a regrowth. Um, Chloe and Quagmire. From what I've been seeing from death, it's like the, a stall fatigue control. I, I do like control, but I don't like the stall fatigue aspect. And that's what I've been seeing a lot of people online telling me that it is. We got Nurgle's Rot. We got Tireless Crypt Flayer. We got Wild Form. And our rare is Beheading Strike. For chaos. Indeed, it is chaos. Beheading Strike reads, can only be played if you have removed three or more units this turn. What? What? Seven damage to your opponent. But you have to remove three or more units this turn. There, there better be a lot of unit removal in in chaos. Like, even if you're, it's your own removal, that seems a bit over... We got an Undying Splendor. One, two, three, four. It's a blessing for death. Just damage your opponent. Seems pretty solid. Seems pretty solid. Uh, oh, we got a Racking Branch Nymph. It's the, like, really basic Sylvan Hero. So I'm really happy I got at least one of those. Then we have a, a Ravenix Gnashing Jaws. It's a it's a rare a foil rare spell. Uh, corners one and two. Move highlighted units to its owner's hands. So just kind of a bounce back. And then four damage to your opponent on the third corner. Seems like a really solid card. I'm going to try and get that card in there while I... Uh, this, those starving Vergeist just don't want to don't want to be scanned. Kind of sad. Kind of sad. How do foils work with physical packs? Is it just a chance? Uh, yeah. I mean, just like in Lightseekers, you get one foil, no matter what it is. Could be a hero, could be a rare, common, uncommon, all that stuff. It's just, you get a foil card. No matter what, in every pack, there's at least one foil card. I just happen to get a foil rare. In that one. In that one. All the other ones were like, pretty uncommon. Uh, Thunderstrike. Fester and Rot. Lift Dryad. Another Sylvanth card. I'm really excited for the Sylvanth. Rally the Little Uns. I'm, dude, the, the, this Savagery is like, I'm happy I got Savagery because it's like what Uprising is for Lightseek is what Savagery is for Warhammer. They're bringing a lot of uh, different utilities to the game. They're bringing a lot of family aspects to the whole thing. So it's like more clans and armies. And it's what we've all want from Uprising. It's what we're getting with Savagery. So I'm really happy to get Savagery right now. So I'm definitely going to play this and then wait for Uprising. Uh, we have Refound Purpose. We have Hallucinogenic Fungus Brew. That's a mouthful. Screeching Spite Revenant. This is an awesome card. First, first of all, for Sylvanth. Uh, I gotta show you this card, because I love Sylvanth. I love this card. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you what the card does. It's X-2-2. It's a Sylvanth unit. It does damage to your opponent. Awesome. But, when you discard this card, you may deploy it on a highlighted champion. Any of your champions. It's like, you discard it, it just comes into play. You can play it from discarding, which makes it so good. Which is kind of what I'm hoping we get in Lightseekers, is uh, something like that uh, for just a buff. Like, if it's discarded, it instead comes into play, right? So, like, when you're discarding, you can, like, discard and build up a really cool board. The only card we saw getting a discard effect was the one card where it's, like, four damage, but if it's discarded, it's two damage still. So, I'm hoping they come up with a lot more uh, really cool discard effects. Um, we got a Loyal... Kernroth Hunter, Kernroth Hunters. It's a Sylvanth unit. Nice. Really happy about that. My rare is an Incest Thunderstruck. It's an Ogre Beast. Now, Ogres are the other family I'm also pretty intrigued about. Ogres, Grotz, Sylvanth. They all seem really fun. Uh, what that one does, I just scanned it in. Sorry. Oh, we got the cat back. The cat is here talking on all the cards. Rosie, Ro you can't be on the desk, honey. No, I'm no, I know, but you're going to lay down and ruin everything. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, come over here. Come over here. Look at my hand. Come to my hand. Good. Now just, just lay down right there. You're comfortable? You're fine? Just put your butt down. Put your butt down. Uh, what Incest Thunderstruck is, is when you discard a card, just, disc nope, stop. Stop! Sorry, guys. You're starting to eat my packs. When you discard this card, discard the top card of your opponent's deck. So, like, if you discard it, you also mill your opponent. That's really cool. And then, of course, it has a X5, X6, where the discard or heroic, heroic deck, discard two cards from your hand to deal damage to your opponent and draw one card. That's really cool. Like, a lot of this stuff that I'm seeing in Savagery is easily transferable over to Lightseekers. And the fact that they're made by the same company gives me hope that they will just do that. They're like, hey, it worked, it worked in uh, Warhammer so well. Let's make something like that for Lightseekers. Let's just do that. Let's just do that. Don't you, Rosie...
stop eating my packs. We got Mesmerize. Guys, never do a pack opening with a cat who loves to eat plastic. That is my one tip for you today. Oh my word. Vicious Dryad, X123, damage to your opponent. It's a Sylvanth unit. Amazing, I love the Sylvanth unit. We got a Vindictive Glare. We got a Flock of Doom. Oh, that's just, that's just a lot of birds. That's pretty cool art, I like that art. It's a Flock of Doom. Curse Splat. It's really cool. Like how I think there was like 145, 147 cards that came out in Savagery. I like I've I've only opened like what four or five packs, but a lot of these are not duplicates, which is really cool. Uh, we got Spectral Grasp. Like I've I've seen a lot of cards that I have played, not a lot of duplicates, which is amazing to see. Uh, the Loon Smash of Fanatics. It's the Grot one where uh, corners one to two. Discard the top card of your uh, opponent's deck if it's a unit. Keep rotating it forward. And then just does three damage. That's I love that card so much. Stream of Corruption. Great card. We got Tireless Crypt Flare. And then our, our rare is the Prison of Grief. It is a spell from death. Prison of Grief reads, Corner 1 highlighted champions cannot play cards. And it's from the two adjacent ones. So it's like the one right in the middle can, but the two next to him can't. And then Corner 2 is damage to your opponent. So four damage. So it's like, hey... You can't play cards on those two heroes, and then you're going to take four damage. That seems really strong. Really powerful. We also, wow, uh, we also pulled a rare hero in our hero slot. That's lucky for us. It's a death, a death risen hero. Uh, at the start of your turn, first of all, it's Archon, Mortark of Sacraments. I think he was like one of the big bosses in, in death when we played the campaign, so... Pulling him makes me feel really happy. I hope I get the Sylvanth hero. I hope I get the champ for Sylvanth. And of course, my Prison of Grief is not scanning. Son of a punk. Uh, what it reads is, at the start of your turn, this champion is disengaged. If the champion is disengaged and your deck is not empty, you may deploy one Risen unit from your discard pile onto this champion. He's a wizard, so being able to deploy a unit onto him is amazingly powerful. Because usually wizards can't do that. So that's really cool that I'm able to deploy a unit on a wizard. Then we have the Monstrous... Monstrous Hunter Courtier, just a, a normal Mordant Death Hero, and our foil is the Herald of Nurgle. It's a uh, demon hero from Chaos. Guys, we're pulling some amazing pulls here. Like these cards are really cool. Are really cool. I mean, I. The only thing I'm upset about is I have to open them all physically very slowly and scan them in while I'm doing this reveal. It feels like it's taken away from, from playing. We got another Lilith Dryad. We got another Ghastly Sprite Revenant. We got another Moon Mad Stavis. Now we're getting into duplicates. We got a Regrowth. Vicious Dryad. Loathsome Plaguebringer. Hallucinogen Fungus Brew. I know that was common. Disease Ridden Demise. Repugnant Plague Drone. Merciless Tree Revenants. Oh, that's our rare card, by the way. I almost skipped it because I was going so fast. We got the Mer uh, Merciless Tree Revenants. It's a Sylvanth. Look at that art. That is beautiful art. I'm trying to avoid the glares as much as possible here. We got when... Uh, it's X22 damage to your opponent. When you discard two or more cards in a single turn, you may restart this unit. Once again, the bad benefit of discarding cards is going to help you so much. It's really dynamic how cards, uh, how amazing these cards are. The Bad Moon. Oh, I love the Grats. I love the Grats. Oh! Oh, guys, we did it. We pulled a rare Sylvanth hero. We pulled Draika Harmadreth. First of all, he's a champion wizard, so he can, he can do both. That's awesome. What he reads is, whenever you discard one or more cards from another effect, you may discard an additional card to deal three damage to your opponent. Guess what card needs you to discard two cards in a turn to restart that buff? This guy, I have a feeling, is going to be clutch in a Sylvanth deck. I cannot wait to build a deck with him. And then we have the uh, Violent Discharge. Oh, I'm super happy I pulled a rare Sylvanth hero. I'm super happy. Oh, that means my Sylvanth deck is already going to be amazingly strong. Already going to be amazingly strong. Now, I know people were playing. They're like, oh, yeah, we bought like six boxes. We're going to build decks. And I'm like, come on, man. Like, I have I have two. I thought I did pretty good with just two. If I need like more physical cards, yeah, I'll buy singles from someone. But come on, just let me have some fun here. Whoa, I just threw that card. We've got Fester of Souls. We've got Ferocious Dire Wolves. Refound Purpose. Oh, it's a... There we go. Thunderstrike. What's wrong with Profound Purpose? Sorry, guys. Once again, it's... it's Freshton, hey! How's it going, man? 
I actually gave you a shout out. Thank you very much for posting those dread reveals on my on my Discord channel. Those are some amazing cards. We talked about them a little bit before we started doing this pack opening. So it's just it's just not gonna work. Is my card's not gonna be able to scan from my iPad? There we go. We got battle tactics. We got another regrowth. We got plague wind. We got call to moon. I love call to moon. Uh, why don't you have the green screen effect on? Because a lot of these cards that I'm revealing are green and or green in picture. So if I reveal them with a the green screen on, it like blurs the whole card. So it just it, it's not worth it. We got primal terror, a nice order card. And then we got another incest thunderstruck. So we got two of these ogre ones. That's gonna be fun. I cannot wait to build a uh, ogre destruction deck now that we have two of those things. We got uh, expansive gur. For just three turns, all of your opponents. Buffs are, or all your opponent's units are dormant. Or no, highlighted champions are dormant, not the buffs, the champions. Uh, we got another racking branch nip, so we got two of the basic uh, Sylvanth heroes. Love it. And then we have an exotic moon eater, which is an ogre. Uh, uncommon foil. When this unit is exhausted, shuffle the top card, shuffle up to one ogre unit from your discard pile into your deck. That's awesome. Like if it stays on board, ogres are also really heavy into discarding as well. So having it be like, hey, you know, if this lives for a little bit, you get to shuffle one of your one, an ogre family from your discard pile back into your deck. Really helps that whole discard mechanic where like yeah you'll discard a card now, but chances are you can probably get it back later in the game. Like it just there's a lot of fun things to do with discard that I'm super happy that we're finally getting into this game and in light seekers and in light seekers. Oh my god, I'm super happy about light seekers. We have silent communion. We have another verdant strike. I am loving all these order cards. We got another moon mad stabas. We got a putrid offering. Remove a highlighted non daemon unit to deal two damage to your opponent and gain three health. You can remove three of your own non daemon units with this card. That putrid offering is going to go really well with that one card that I was like, how is that really possible to play? We got a vicious dryad. We got a virulent discharge. We got a deathly invocation. That's a lot of text for this one. That's really cool. Uh, you got a brace yesterday? For for what? What did you what did you need a brace for? Boing Root Bounders, Venhul's Dense Macabre. Then we have another another Prison of Grief. Just another Prison of Grief. First one didn't scan. Hopefully this one does. No, these Prison of Griefs they're impossible. They're impossible to scan right now. I don't know why. They just are. We got Power Eternal. A nice Death Buff or Death Blessing. Uh, we got Stalwart Icebrow Hunter, which is an ogre champion. So, really, pretty simple one. Discard a beast unit. You may, from your hand, to rotate a highlight unit two steps forward. Standard ogre. Standard ogre. And then we got a uh, Foil Loyal Kurnoth Hunters and more Sylvanth cards. I love Sylvanth, guys. Sylvanth is going to be so fun. I, like, I'm excited for Sylvanth. I'm excited for the ogres. For your, Oh, you got braces. Or just like a brace for your teeth, like a Invisalign type of thing. For your upper mouth? Like a mouth guard? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I had braces for a long time. I have a, a decent smile now. I'm not going to say it's perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. I'll give it that. We have a Ghastly Spite Revenant. We have Foul Regenesis. Another Verdant Strike. Already we have a lot of these. Throne of Vines. Cloying Quagmire. Festering Nurglings. This is what you could literally have seven of these cards. Probably braces. I mean, it's it's not uncommon. People have some people have a lot of really messed up teeth, and it's a better to get it fixed than to have them like all pulled and reset. We got Nurgle's rot, frenzied bloodletting. We got night shroud, rise of the dead. Oh, that was our rare. That was our rare. Sorry, guys. Rise of the dead. Is a death rare. Look at that art. Look at that art. Take it all in. I can't say I can relate. That's okay, Shibes. That's okay, man. What it reads is it's a it's a wizard ability. Can only be played if you have 12 or more units in the discard pile. Once again, a card that gets massive benefit from how large your discard pile is. Goes with the whole discard mechanic or just even a late game card. Things like this are really, really fun to do if you can just play off the discard mechanic. Uh, deploy up to three Risen units from your discard pile onto a highlighted champions. They can be a wizard. That's awesome. That is awesome. 
It's like, yeah, you know, after a while, my whole discard pile's gone. Nope, three Risen units come back. Risen, at, now looking at these cards, Risen, look like it'd be, yeah, it could be really fun. We got Frost Fury. That's cool. Discard, or, uh, remove a highlighted ogre to deal four damage. We got a Vile Pox Bringer for our hero. And we got Call of Alirlai of Alariel. That was, wow, I read that horribly wrong, didn't I? Uh, heroic Act, discard one card from your hand to move up to rotation units from your discard pile to your hand. Rotate one step forward. That is probably going to be a Sylvanth Blessing. No doubt in my mind is that going right in Sylvanth. It is an order blessing that deals with discarding a card to then get more cards back from your discard pile to your hand to then help you discard more cards. Who would have thought? Ah, oh, guys, I'm super, super excited for this. Like, they're, they're playing off old... Old clans or armies or families that they've done before, but they're also adding in new ones, which is amazing. That's one thing Lightseekers is not really adding in new ones. They're building off the ones that they've already established, which is good because in Kindred, they only like, yeah, we're finally bringing them in. Now we'll establish them more. Um, the whole highlighted unit mean. Um, so I'll show you this. On the bottom of the card, on the bottom of the card, it shows a diagram. And the diagram, the, the game has four lanes. The diagram unit, the red ones are your opponents, the green ones are yours. So that's what it means when it says highlighted unit. You, when you play this with a champion, your champion is the white square. And then based on the grid, those are the highlighted units you can choose from. So in, in those five boxes surrounding the champion, those one of those five is something you can choose to do too, something to. That's what it means with a highlighted unit. Highlighted unit also means it has to be a unit. It cannot be a spell. There is a difference between spell and unit in this game as well. Yeah, they have like 10, 10 families in Lightseekers that they're they're still flushing out and developing really well. So I'm not even upset. And of course, we can also cross-combine, whereas Warhammer, you can't cross-combine like that. Um, so deck building is very niche in Warhammer, where Lightseekers is like, you can have a rainbow deck for all I care. Another Mesmerize. A Dreadblade Harrow. A Loathsome Plaguebringer. A Discharging Blight King. Yeah, no problem, Shibes. Anytime. Anytime. Any questions, feel free to ask. A bellowing voice. Feels like pretty good in Ogre. Resistant, res, resilient Plague Bearer. Got another one. Got another Night Shroud. A Cower. Ooh. Gain health. Move a highlighted unit to the owner hands. Seems pretty good. It's a... It's a it belongs to, like, the, the Gur, which I think is, like, a, a god... So like there's there's a whole dip like there's there's clans there's units of what they are in the clan then there's like a god that you worship that you can only have other like cards related to that god in your deck for the blessings of course so you can't like worship multiple gods to get multiple blessings so there's like a really cool uh, way to build these decks to make them very unique so that like it limits you what cards you can choose from if you start going down a a find more pigeonhole type of thing I got a crazed colossal squig which is my rare I keep I keep going way past my rare. Look at this thing. It's got way too many eyes. It's just, it's just a, a giant meatball. He looks like Meatwad from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. But, like, terrifying. What he reads is X3. He is a squig. As the center's play, discard one card from your hand. Damage to your opponent, remove a highlighted unit. And his, his thing is he has three things to choose from. So you can play him anywhere on a champion. And then the three corner of the three in front of him. It sounds complicated. It sounds that way. But once you, like, if you start getting into the game and figuring out how to build decks, it's actually not that complicated at all. What it is, more or less, is it's it helps you build, or it helps a variety of decks to be built. Oh, yeah, yeah, very green, exactly. But, uh, oh, awesome. We got another rare hero for uh, for the demon. We got Rotgus Rainfather. She's a giant mouth in his stomach. Look at that thing. Uh, let me read this. Uh, if a highlighted champion is engaged... First of all, it's a wizard. Uh, if the highlighted champion across from him is engaged, deal one damage to your opponent at the start of your turn, otherwise gain one health. This cannot be increased by effects. That is so good! What engaged means is if, they, uh, if the champion across from him has a unit or a spell, like if they if they're have something deployed in front of them, they're engaged in combat. So if like, hey, if you're, if you're playing something here, I'm going to deal one damage at the beginning of my turn. If not, I'm just going to heal one. That's really good. That's really strong. I like that ability. That's an amazing ability. And then I have a frenzied bloodletting. Uh, and back to your, uh, back to your thing there, uh, Freshin. It's 
it's complicated. True, because you have to like you go with the gods whole thing, then you go with the the clans whole thing. Uh, but because of it, but because of the complicated way of deck building, it really makes it so that it's not just hey, you know what the best card in tech is? Like, it's Scrapworks Bruiser. You want to run attack? Run Scrapworks Bruiser. Instead, it's like hey, I want to run attack deck, but I want to run it with machines. What's the best like card that fits into machines as opposed to like what's just the best card? So really kind of like pigeonholing and making it so like if you want to build a deck, you're probably going to play these cards. You want to build another deck, you're probably going to play these cards. You want to play more discard, here's, a, here's like a stash of discard cards that really work. So it really makes it so like if you want to build a certain type of deck, there's cards that benefit you for playing that certain type of deck. As opposed to just like, hey, I want to build a certain type of deck. Well, it's going to be the same 20 cards as all the other tech decks. It's just going to have like five cards difference. And then if you want like more healing or more card draw, just splash it, whatever. So really, really making a lot more... Uh, unique and different cards really makes the deck building variety a lot better and that's what helps a a, uh, a various meta it's what we don't have in light seekers light seekers right now it's like if you want to play ranked or competitive there's three decks to choose from because all the cards are so bland and generic that it's like yeah i want to run tech all right if you want to run tech you have to have these 25 cards they're your they're your tech cards if you want to play slow add more healing if you want to play fast add more attack but like if you don't have these 20 25 tech cards you're not playing tech that's that's what it is. Exactly, exactly, Fresher. We are definitely getting that for Light Seekers. A lot of the Awakening was the very like generic. Just if you wanted to play, and these are the best cards. A lot of those cards are getting rotated out, and we're getting a lot more uh, refined, specific cards with Uprising. That is going to change the game on its head. It's going to do exactly what Savagery is probably doing for Warhammer right now. I haven't played Warhammer for all that long, so I can't say for sure. But just from reading these cards and learning, the, just from playing the solo campaigns that I did, it definitely feels like what Savagery is doing for Warhammer is what Uprising will do for Lightseekers. We got a Loathsome Plague Bearer. We got an Itchy Nuisance. Another Bellowing Voice. First, I just want to read Bellowing Voice. Because I know for a fact Ogres are really strong and Ogres run a lot of uh, Heroic Acts. And what this card reads is trigger all Heroic Acts on highlighted units. So every unit on your board, you trigger the abilities on them. Which is, um, first of all, amazing in Light Seekers. Uh, we'll see how it is in this. Uh, but this does not count as using a Heroic Act. So you're triggering them all, but you can still then use one in your second action. When you discard this card, you may search your deck for an Ogre unit and move it to your hand. If your deck was searched, shuffle it afterwards. Once again, a card that benefits you in a different way from discarding it. You can use it to do something amazing, or if it gets discarded, you still get a benefit from it. It's not just discarding a dead card. Those are some amazing stuff. Niche cards, exactly. Yeah, no, I think you spelled that right, Freshman. I think you spelled that exactly right. We have a Starving Vergeist. We have a Lilith Dryad. We have a Battle Tactics. We have another Screeching Sprite Revenant. I'm loving that card. Trample Underfoot. Uh, once again, the Sylvanth, Sylvanth Army runs through my veins. It's amazing. We got a Roused to Wrath. And we got another Morgoth's Harbinger. We got another one of these amazing Risen units. I am super excited for that. That, that was the first card freshman that I revealed. And I put it up with the green screen. And like 95% of the card was just see-through. And I was like, oh, I better turn that off. Otherwise, we're never going to see anything. We got another Monstrous Hunter. Oh, my. We got a rather rare Demon Hunter. Or dear uh, Demon Warrior. We got Hortilicus Slimux. Awesome. I got another rare hero, guys. At the start of your first turn, you may deploy a demon unit from your hand or deck onto this champion if your deck was searched shuffled afterwards. So right away, on your first turn, it's it's like Howlock. This is a demon like Howlock. It's just, hey, your first turn. Put a demon unit. Fresh, freshen. Have a good one, man. Thanks for stopping by. I know, I know it's really late for you, so I don't blame you, but thanks for stopping by, man. It's always a pleasure having you here. But yeah, it's essentially like Howlock for, for demons. Game starts, there's a specific demon unit I run in this deck all the time that I want on first turn. Boom, put that thing out there. And then a foil racking branching nymph. Awesome card for. Oh! You know, I don't. Do I not have. I don't have the uh, notifications. I do apologize. About a half hour ago, A. Nyot followed me on Twitch. Thank you very much, A. Nyot. Thank you very much. I don't have that and I feel really bad. It didn't notify me because there's no notifications on this Let's Talk screen. I do apologize. But thank you very much. Thank you very much for the follow, man. I, pr I appreciate it. 20 minutes, you might you might be gone because I didn't notify you. But thank you very much for the follow. I feel really bad now. 
and I, I, I hope that you come back. I hope I hope I'm I'm getting you from the Warhammer side because this game is really fun. I'm hoping to eventually just get a large crowd of people who just like card games because I plan on playing a lot of card games, guys. Just a lot of card games. Verdant Strike we have. We got another Spectral Grasp. We got Enrupting Enrapturing Song. Gain one health, rotate all high delay units, which is the adjacent of your opponent's units one step forward without triggering their effects. God, that card is so strong. You get to rotate their buffs and they just don't do anything. Uh, we got Icefall Yetis. I think we got a foil one of that before. Foul Regenesis. Thunderstrike. Like, I am super excited. This it, It's all really cool. We got another Roused to Wrath. We got a Bloated Blight King. Another Hallucinogenic Fungus Brew. And then my rare is the Great Green Spite. The Great Green Spite. So spiteful. What it reads is XX1. Discard the top rotation cards from your opponent's deck and draw rotation cards. You may discard a card to repeat this effect up to three times. That's awesome. It's It goes right into the mill. It goes right into the grout mill. Like, yeah, I'll draw a card. Okay, I'll discard another card so you mill another one and I'll draw one. And then I'll just keep discarding until I find what I want. Wow, and then I went ahead and pulled a, a rare blessing called Foul Destiny for Chaos. What it is is uh, two clucky corners, one and two. Heroic Act, deploy up to rotation demon units from your hand or deck onto the highlighted champion. Normal restrictions apply. So like the, it shows three in front of it. So there's three champions to choose from. If your deck was searched this way, shuffle it, uh, shuffle it afterwards, rotate this one step forward. So it just, demons look very aggressive. They look very rush forward. We have a uh, uh, Mornfang Skalg, who is an ogre unit. Cannot wait to play him. He's a common one. And then we have a Foil Foul Regenesis. Foil Follower Genesis. I am loving this. I Once again, I, I, I know I have nine viewers, and I'm thanking everyone here for who's being here. It's really, really a pleasure having everyone. I just I hope the pack opening is not too uh, displeasing to you. I know that has scan. That one scan. That one not scan. There we go. I hope it's like, dude, I, I came here to watch you play play Savagery, and you're not playing Savagery. I got two boxes to open. I, I'm probably going to be here for... A little while. I still gotta go. I gotta go get my B dub soon. I'm thinking after this pack, I'm gonna quick go get my B dub so I can get some food. I do apologize. I will be probably eating. Uh, this is a learning experience for you, Shives, dude. I'm here to answer questions. This is the time to ask him because once I play, it, I'll be like, I'm messing up so many things. But I, I feel like I know the game pretty well just from the demo campaigns, which is awesome. The demo campaigns literally taught me how to play the game. I did ask a few questions of the of deck building strategies, but other than that, playing the game taught me how to play the game. That sounds really weird. Playing the game taught me how to play the game. Yeah, playing the demo games taught me how to play this really well. Throne of Vines. Enrapturing Song. Once again, an amazing card now. Moon Mad Stabas. I Spell Yetis. Curse Splat. Bloated Blight King. A lot of these are, are uh, duplicates now. Repugnant Plague Drone. Of course, we're getting all the commons and uncommons, so those ones are going to be... It's all the rares that we're looking for, right? We got a Blood Knight Charger. We got a rare Vampire. Oh, I hope Vampires are good. I really hope vampires are good. Vampires are such a strong aesthetic fantasy creature that I really hope they're good in this game. What it reads... Oh, no, it's a it's a unit. Sorry, it's a unit. It is uh, four clunky corners, the last one is seven. When a, when a highlighted champion deploys a unit, rotate this one step forward. And it's the, the champions next to this one and the champions adjacent for enemies next to this one. So there's four people that, like, if they deploy units, then it'll just rotate forward and deal seven damage to them. That's awesome. I think I tried playing this in the Dread one, and it just didn't work because there were so many Risen units, and there was almost no vampires. It was really difficult to play. Oh, uh, we got Form of the Swarm. Then we got a, a Glareface Scaremonger, which is a Grot unit, basic, or ba a Grot champion, uh, basic one, so it's really nice that we're getting a lot of the simple basic ones. And then a Sylvan Uncommon, the Spirit of Durthu. Guys, I think we have all the Sylvan cards we need now. This guy's awesome. What he reads is Heroic Act. Discard one Sylvan unit from your hand. Deploy one Sylvan unit from your discard pile onto this champion. Guys, I got to foil one of that. I think I think I just pulled all four of my Sylvan heroes that I wanted to build. I don't know if there's any more past like the, the basic ones and some two really good ones. We'll see. We'll see. But right now, I know for a fact that I got four good Sylvan units. Or four good Sylvan champions. I'll be right back. I'm going to go get some beat before it gets cold. So I do apologize if I'm, if I'm like chewing. I'll turn the mic off and turn it back on when I do the uh, rare card reveals. But be right back, guys. One sec. I, I need food. I'm starving. I haven't eaten anything all day.
guys i'm back i'm back from more card pack openings thank you guys for sticking around i was i was hungry and i got my b-dubs i got some some delicious medium got some delicious honey barbecue parmesan garlic asian zing got a whole a whole slew of things in here so forgive me if i if i am eating while i have this one i'll probably just go up that way i can eat and not have to mute everything uh curse of years glorious afflictions Venomous Spider Riders, Malefic Fumes, Impenetrable Hide. Once again, these the the death ones, and even some of the unaligned cards are just really festering nurglings. I think there's I think there's also seven different art for that card, which is awesome because you can have seven different units. So it's like, hey, you know, seven different units have each one of the different arts. I think that's really cool on the card. Primal Terror, uh, Screeching Spite Revenant, and the rare is the Earth Shattering Charge for. I believe that's destruction. It's green. Destruction. What it reads is, can only be played if you have eight or more cards in your hand. So, destruction usually dumps their hand pretty quick. So, this is really, it's more of a control I think. Uh, four damage to your opponent. Discard five cards in your hand. Draw five cards. What? Maybe this is supposed to be meant like in an ogre deck where you're discarding cards. And then it's all of a sudden like you discard a bunch of cards at once. Draw five cards and deal four damage to your opponent. This could be really cool. I cannot wait to try this out in an ogre deck. Earth starting charge looks really strong. Uh, then we have the Great Maw Talisman. I don't think we've seen that one yet. We have the Macabre Ghoul King. And we have a, a Foil Loon Smasher Fanatics. Really happy about that card. I love I love the Grots. I love the Grot Mill. Could be a lot of fun. And we're back. Ferocious Dire Wolves. Venomous Spider Riders. Do you guys want me to just talk and then show the... Because I feel like I'm reading a lot of the same names. I'll probably just end up talking and then just show you the rares. That just feels better instead of like me reading the names. Obviously, I'll have to keep scanning them. So I'll just fill in some blank space here. You know, every once in a while. Yeah, it's pretty cool. How's this? How's it going? So, so uh, the people who have played uh, Warhammer out there. People who have uh, come to the stream... Welcome, welcome. I'm primarily a Lightseekers player, so I do know a lot of the Play Fusion games. The whole buff mechanic is pretty similar. What decks have you guys been playing on ladder or online right now? What decks have you built where you, you're just really happy with how they how the mechanics all came out? Are you for real right now? I got a third Morgast Harbinger. This better be a tier one card. This better be a great card. I got three of them in like half a box. How is that possible? Thank you, honey. She brought me a napkin. Because we're eating messy wings, and I have pretty cards, so I don't want to get them dirty. But like that card, that card's gotta be good, right? There, otherwise, why would I have three of them as opposed to all the other rare cards that I could have gotten? Uh, ooh, we got a very uncommon, or yeah, we got an uncommon Stormcast in Night Encanter, and then we got Guardian of Souls, a common spirit for our foil, spirit uh, wizard, I believe. So that's pretty legit. It's pretty legit. But yeah, have you guys uh, have you guys been playing? Uh, like, have you has anyone tested out uh, the Grot Mill? Has anyone tested out the the Sylvanth or the Ogres outside of the the app? Like, which ones are you having the most fun with right now? Because I I'm super excited. Like I said, for Sylvanth, I'm super excited to try Ogre Destruction. Grot Mill, I, I'm gonna love that regardless. I love playing that in the app. It was so much fun. Didn't win a whole lot. It was really difficult to play, but I love the aspect of it. She keeps coming in with little treats. She gave me a little jar of ranch for my wings. God, I love ranch. Ranch is the whitest thing in the world, but it's amazing. But, uh, yeah, like, I, I mean, if you guys haven't, uh, are you guys looking at the cards online and being like, wow, this looks really cool. Like, some of these families look really good. Uh, were you, were some of the Lightseekers players who follow me for Lightseekers, were you able to go and play the, uh, the demo games for the Savagery launch and just play some of the cards and get really, in, really inspired with them as well as I was? Because I love playing these cards with that whole uh, release thing. I thought that was really cool. Well, I got another Blood Knight Charger. I got another Blood Knight Charger. How many rares are in this set? Because now I'm starting to get duplicate rares, and it's not even one box yet. Oh, we got another Spirit of Druthur, so we even... 
We also got the blessing silent communion, which I believe is a Sylvan one specific almost or made for the made for the aspect. Reveal the top four cards of your deck, draw up to one unit and one spell from among them, put them into put any cards not drawn this way on the bottom of your deck in any order. It's pretty legit. I like it. I like it a lot. So uh yeah, I mean like what what were you guys all all thinking? Uh, I know you guys watched me play the the savagery stuff for the uh, the app. Like, were you guys thinking that some of those decks were really cool that I was playing too? Because they they were really cool guys. Savagery is an awesome set for this game, and I, the game in itself, I I heard had a few things wrong with it. Like, if you wanted to play really good, you played Scarbrand. That was that was how you played the game competitively. Kind of how it is right now for Lightseekers. If you want to play competitively, guess what? You play Fatigue and Mill. Um, where it's like, yeah, if you want to play competitively, you play Scarbrand. Um, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to play Destruction. I wanted to play uh, Order. I wanted to play some cards that make me feel like the game was fun. Weren't competitive at all, but I enjoyed playing them because they, they spoke to me on a spiritual level. Oh, man. Three rares in one pack, guys. How awesome is that? First rare I got is the Slobbering Beast of Nurgle. Slobbering Beast of Nurgle. What this card reads is X33. Oh, I've already I've already gotten this one. This is my second one. As it's in display, discard one card from your hand. Damage to your opponent. Highlighted units are dormant, which is the ones across it. So already three six damage. Highlighted units. Second one we got is Jaws of Destruction. Jaws of Destruction. I loved this card in the Grot one. I love it. It's a it's a destruction blessing that reads: treat all highlighted stacking units as though they had one additional stacking, and their stack was one greater, up to a maximum support of two and stack size of three. That is awesome. There are a lot of cards literally you just stack it once. You stack it once, and it's up to stacking two. That's it. That's It already comes into play with stacking one, so a lot of things get amplified automatically. And then, of course, we got another Merciless Tree Revenants, which is an amazing Sylvanth Rare, and I'm happy that I got a second one of it. I'm really happy I got a second one. And a foil one to beat if I ever want to play physical. If I ever want to play physical, I have another one. I think it's going to be great. I think there's, there's so many really good Sylvan cards that like I feel like you could probably build a decent Sylvan deck just from Savagery alone but you're still going to want to include some of the base cards like buff removal uh, some uh, like beat back some of those cards that move their opponent's board around just for manipulation and stuff like that it's really good that like some of the base cards are really still standard but if you want to build a really fun deck with these new cards a lot of them are going to be with the new set and not just from the old ones that really goes to show the power level is pretty pretty average all around throughout all of the sets that they've come out with I mean, don't you agree? Don't you agree? When you're looking at this... Alright, I got one rare. It's called the Diluge of Nurgle. That's a pretty big Nurgle. I don't know I don't know how large Nurgles are supposed to be, but that thing's huge. What it reads is XX5. Damage to your opponent. Discard up to two unit cards to increase this by three for each card discarded. So essentially it could be 11 damage if you discard two cards. Which, I mean, 11 damage off of a spell? Really strong. Oh, I got another Sylvanth! A spiteful branch witch. It's a wizard unit. Says or wizard champion reads: This champion can play abilities while engaged. That's really good. Wizards cannot play abilities while they have a spell on board. For those of you who didn't know, so having a wizard that can play abilities while he has a spell in play is amazing. Uh, you may discard one card from your hand to draw one card. That is also really good. Just hey, this is a dead card in this matchup. I'll cycle it and draw a card. I am, I am over the moon at that I fact that I got all my like Sylvanth cards that I want in my first box opening. That is amazing. That is, that is, I'm lucky. I'm the luckiest little boy you'll ever meet in the world. Whoever tells you otherwise hasn't met me yet, and they don't know it. That's exactly how I'm living my life. Like, hey, oh man, you must be super lucky. I'm like, yeah, I am. Did you not know that? I'm like, no, I didn't. This is the first time I met you. I'm like, yeah, I'm just the luckiest man you'll ever meet in the world. I'm like, wow, it's pretty cool. I mean, I've met a lot of people. I haven't met the luckiest man. I'm glad I met you. But, yeah, I mean, I haven't even looked. I've, I've solely, but my, I've tunnel visioned onto the Sylvan. I have not even noticed... Like, people are probably, like, revealing these rares and looking at him like, wow, he's going to have a sick Risen deck. Or, like, oh, my God, his Ogre deck is going to be nuts with all these cards he's got. I haven't even looked. I've been like, yeah, I love Sylvan. I love getting all these Ogre cards. It makes me feel bad because I'm definitely going to want to play other decks. Um, Like, the, 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 the Demon ones. Shives to the Casino! Right? Exactly. Yeah, like, the, the, the Demon ones, they didn't really intrigue me as much, but they seem really... Cool, like that you're removing a lot of your own units to do some really cool things. Once again, guys, 
three rares in the one pack. Two of them are repeats. I don't think this third one... I don't think the third one is, but we got a Ravnix Gnashing Jaws. Everyone knows what that card is because I revealed it before. Uh, but, but the new one is the Goddess of Life. It is a blessing for order, so it's awesome. It's probably going to go in my seventh deck. Who would have thought? What this card reads is three clunky corners, two, two, and one. Corners one and two. When you discard one or more cards, draw rotation cards and rotate this one step forward. So when you discard a card, you draw two cards and this blessing's out. Awesome. Corner three, when you discard one or more cards, draw a card. So like the first two turns that it's out, you get to draw two cards every time you discard a card. But the third corner, it just sticks. It doesn't rotate past. It just stays there so that every time when you discard a card, you draw a card. It's always going to value. This card is so, so strong. And I think it actually was in the Sylvan starter. And I, I uh, oh, and my last one is the another Archon Monarch, who I really hope is just a really strong Risen champion to, to run. But uh, yeah, it's that blessing for anything discard wise is just instant value all the time and the fact that like in this game they there's no way to remove blessings unlike combo buffs like you can remove combo buffs pretty easily in light seekers there's no way to get rid of a blessing once the blessing is out it's out it's gonna do its thing you can't stop it so like the fact that that is just a consistent value card engine means that like once it gets there you start steamrolling you just discard draw discard draw discard draw and it it's nuts it gets so good. And because of it, because it doesn't just involve, like, a certain family, it can be played in anything that you just want to discard stuff with. For, uh, obviously, for order, because you can't cross-order stuff like that. But it's awesome. I'm looking so forward to building all of these decks. Like, and the fact is, like, I, I love this game, and I probably want to stream it quite a bit, especially now Savage. I, well, I want to build a lot of decks. Um, but Saturday, Saturday will be my Hearthstone pack opening stream. And I'll probably play some of that. I still want to... I bought all of all four of the... Uh... Wow, okay. Well, I got another Earth Shattering Charge, which is another one that I was like, I wonder if Ogres are really going to use this. So I'm glad that I got a second one of that. But then, of course, I got another Goddess of Life. A foil one of that buff that I was like, dude, this is going to be an amazing card draw engine for order. For the discard order. Um, but anyway, back to what I was saying. Um... Saturday, Hearthstone's expansion came out this past week, and it has so many really fun cards with it too, the Rise of Shadows, where Saturday I'm having a pack reveal stream for Hearthstone, and we'll probably play some Hearthstone, and then Eternal, I bought all four campaigns for Eternal to just play the single player campaign, so I'll probably want to do that sometime too. So like, I have a lot of a lot of games that have a lot of new contact, and thank you, um, oh lord, I don't want to get your name wrong, and I can't think of it off the top of my head, someone was kind enough to say, hey, you should play this game. Uh, Brigbriz. Brigbriz was the the man of the hour who said that I should play Eternal because it was really fun. And it is. It's a lot of fun. It's a free-to-play digital card game. Um, you don't have to spend any money on it unless you want to. It, it's, from what I understand, really easy to get gold and craft cards and build really fun uh, decks for the digital card. It's only digital, so there's no buying physical cards. Um, kind of like Lightseekers. But the game is it's really fun. The art style is really cool. Uh, there's like, I think six... Six different, uh, no, not six, like five. Four, five, five? Either way, there's a lot of different, like, you know, yellow, green, blue, what you can play. I think there's six. I think I'm sticking with six uh, that you can play, and then you can cross-combine them. But the thing is, like, you can triple-combine them and make really strong decks that really, like, synergize well with each other. Um, but, yeah, I, I think it could be really fun. Uh, I got another Crazed Colossal Squig. Awesome card. Awesome card. But yeah, there's just there's just so much, so many games right now to play. Uh, and I, in, in my own opinion, I don't think it's betraying Lightseekers at all. I'm playing different card games. I'm learning new mechanics. I'm still with Play Fusion. I'm still with Play Fusion. Not like working with them, but I'm still promoting their game. Warhammer, it's amazing. I'm still promoting Lightseekers. I did card reveals this past Monday. They were awesome. Um, but it, it's not a betrayal to my number one game that I play. Because as I'm playing, there's five. Okay, thank you, Shives. Yeah, as I play all these card games, I am once again learning deck building in a different game. I'm learning dirt card mechanics. Uh, I'm learning order of operations in all these games that I can then take that knowledge to other games such as Lightseekers and build new decks. Like, wow, if this worked in this game, I wonder if there's a way I can try to ma manipulate or find something like that in this game. So instead of like, yeah, you, you're really good at Lightseekers for playing Lightseekers a lot, but 
I, I really just want to be a diverse deck builder, a diverse player of the games. Not really competitive, but just make a lot of variety of various decks that could be really fun and thematic. And yeah, playing other card games is a great way for me to do that. We have the Great Green Spite again. So great, so green, so spiteful for our rare. Uh, we got Gaze of the Nurgle. Spirit of Durthu, another the common Sylvanth, and the Throne of Vines, which is another common foil. So, another repeat pack. I think we got two more of this box. Then we're under the second box, guys. We're under the second box. I think now is just now is just a really good time to also remind everyone that, guys, if you have an Amazon Prime account, did you also know that if you link it to your Twitch Prime account, you or Twitch account, you get a free Twitch Prime sub once a month. It's amazing. It doesn't cost you a single dime. All you do is you go to your favorite Twitch streamer, you hit that subscribe button for free, give them a free tier one sub. It's essentially equivalent to a tier one sub. And it helps promote their channel, it helps promote their stream, helps promote their community as a whole. And all you did was hit a button. It was free. You already paid for it through your Amazon Prime account. The only difference is the Twitch or the Twitch Prime account and your tier one sub. The tier one sub is an auto renewal. Your Twitch Prime is not. So every month, make sure to go back to your favorite streamer and re-hit that subscribe button. Retell them, hey, I'm still sticking with you, man. I didn't go anywhere. You're who I believe in. You're who I want to support. So definitely, definitely, please, if it, even if it's not me, go to your favorite streamer. Set an alarm the first of every month. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you show your streamer some love because they, they love it. As a streamer myself, I'm starting to realize how amazing it feels to get people to sub for me. It feels really nice because it means you guys love the content that I'm putting out. And I love the fact that you love it. It means that I'm doing a good job. And I hope that someday I can turn this into, I mean, a long way down the road, to a more full-time career so that I can bring out more content for you guys. Because Lord knows, like, streaming three days a week is is already, like, busy enough with my full-time schedule. But I'd love to be able to stream more. And uh, the more income, the more I can do that for you by, you know, maybe cutting back less hours, streaming more on the weekends. I don't know. We'll find out. But, I mean, right now, I, I want to spend time with my girlfriend, guys. She's an awesome lady. She's doing so much for me right now. I want to spend time with her. So... I do apologize if you guys want me to stream more. I, I have a life outside of this that hopefully will one day make this a job so this will be part of my life too, in a much larger way. We have Rise of the Dead. We have Rise of the Dead as our rare. What this card does, I don't think I've, no, I have this. If you're if 12 more discard piles, put three Risen units into play. Once again, I cannot wait for Risen. I also got Scargrot the Loon King. We got our, our rare Grot champion. Awesome, I'm looking forward to that guy. He is a champion wizard for Grot. When this champion deploys a spell, you may look at the top card of your deck. Either put it on the back on the top or move it to the bottom and draw one card. So you don't want to mill it or discard it. Draw a card. It's You scry every turn. You scry every time you lay a spell. He's a great guard. I think he was the, the main Grot unit for the uh, Grot campaign. So I had a lot of fun with him. I thought it was really dynamic and really cool. I'm super excited. Uh, what's the orange symbol there? Orange symbol. What orange symbol? Was it on the champion? Are you talking about his orange corner? Or the, the orange circle? There's there's this one here, and then there's this like reddish one here. Is it top or bottom? Just say top or bottom. While we go into the next pack. The corner? Uh that corner so those for champions in this game, um, Blessings in this game are the equivalent to combo buffs or com or just combos in Lightseekers. And the way to complete those or to achieve those blessings is to complete quests on heroes. Quests uh, determine the corners. The, the blue one is a spell. That orange one is just deal damage somehow with this champion by doing a an action card, by having a buff deal damage that he's in engaged with. Something just deals damage. And then it'll rotate to the next quest that he has to complete to unveil his blessing. So you got to understand, like, if you want to run powerful blessings, your champions are probably going to have corners that are really easy to complete their quests with. So, um, if it's a really buff heavy or really blessing heavy deck, make sure that your champions are really easy to complete their quests so you can just get those blessings out as soon as possible. Uh, but they kind of balance it out by having more difficult corners to complete with champions that have a lot stronger ability powers. So, you're not uh, losing a whole lot of. I got two rares in this pack, guys. I got two rares. I got another green spite. Green, uh, the great green spite. And I got another Draka Hammerdreth. The amazing Sylvanth rare hero. I'm super excited for that guy. But, uh, yeah, that, that's that's what it means. Um, it means that um, you have to deal damage on that corner for it to rotate. So, like, there's there's some that are really easy to complete. 
For instance, there's um there's a one that's like the first corner is deploy a unit, second corner is deploy or deal damage. So like with one card you can complete two quests if they don't remove that card. Plain and simple. Because you deploy a unit, goes to the next corner. Next turn that unit will deal damage. You completed the damage corner. Right there. You just completed two quests with one card. That's how easy it is to complete those stuff. Which is why the ones that are difficult to complete will not have like corner synergy like that. It'll be like, yeah, you have to remove a unit with this card. Then you have to play, like, you have to lay a spell. Then you have to lay a, uh, an action unit, or, uh, uh, just an action card. And you can't do that if a spell is engaged, so you have to wait, right? Like, that's, that's how they make it kind of balanced out to complete quests on stronger unit or on stronger champions, as opposed to be able to complete them with, like, one or two cards for the whole, the whole champion as a whole. Guys, we're on to box two. I'm going to take another bite of my wings. They are getting kind of cold. Uh, apparently, the driver like took 45 minutes to get here. Not too happy about that. Just putting that out there. All right, guys, sorry for that. I know how much you love listening to my voice, but I have to eat. I'm a human who loves nourishment. I usually get to eat before my streams when I come home from work, but work lately has just been a nightmare with um, busy schedules and all that stuff. So when I come home, it's like I have an hour to stream or hour before I stream. So I do apologize for not being a little more intricate on my streams or getting stuff ready for you guys. Monday was really easy. I got home at like noon. Today I got home at like 5, 5.15 and I had to stream at 6. So like, ah, oh, I'm rushing to do this stuff. My rare, I got Divine Inspiration. I think it's a new one. It's an order. I like it. It reads, can only be played if the highlighted champions have completed their quests. So once again, more of a late game card. You have to complete your quest in champion before you even get a benefit from it. All highlighted blessings become unrevealed and restart those champions. Draw two cards. That's really good. That's really good. That's like, hey, you know, I completed, especially in Lightseeker, it's like, hey, these combos all went off. You didn't do anything about them. They're all, they're all used up. Good. Cool. Lay this card. They, it's like getting shuffled back into your deck, right? You can play them again. If you, if your deck allows you to do that, you can play them right away again. That's amazing for like a uh, a very uh, blessing strong, uh, a strong blessing heavy deck that wants to be able to play the blessings multiple times and has the cards to do that. Usually, when you build your deck, you build it so that, like you can get the blessings off at least at least once. Uh, but if you build a deck with just really really cheesy heroes that can build uh, really easy stuff to get your blessings off. Being able to flip three of them back over and try them again, that could be, like, game-changing for some people. That could be awesome. Be like, oh, God, now, that, that blessing did, like, nine damage to me. Now it's back under and could possibly do another nine damage to me. Oh, God, why? Type of deal. Which I think is also really good. It's like it's like orders trying to be Storm for Lightseekers. Hey, you want to play more combos? Cool, yeah. You want to play more blessings? Yeah, let's just flip them back over and try it again. Quest, quest round two. Come on. Scan the card. Death cards are so temperamental. I don't know why. I don't know why. They just are. If it's death, it's the purple and the black. Like I said, the lighting here is not... Not the best. I just closed the app. Well, let's go find our rare card here real quick while we're restarting the app. We got... Ooh, a, no, a new one. We got a Pus Goyle Blightlord in this pack. It's pretty legit what this card reads. Come on, come on. Now, now I'm just teasing you. What this card reads is uh, four corners, one, 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 one. Uh, reduce one da reduce damage received from highlighted enemies by the first corner. Second corner is you gain one health. Third corner is draw rotation cards. Fourth corner is damage to your opponent. All around, it's a good card. Um, I wonder if there's ways to like increase the numbers or do something to amplify it. Because it is all based on the rotation numbers and it all has a base of one. But I'm sure that there's a way to, like, 
increase the the healing or damage or the rotation number the value in itself to just have a get great value be able to remove a lot of buffs be able to heal you for a lot be able to deal a lot of damage and draw a massive amount of cards that i could i could feel that being really really strong which is probably why it's a rare and not just an uncommon if is if uh they they have ways of just making you able to increase the corner values Gotta scan these in quick, go to my next pack, I jumped ahead. I showed you the rare before I even got to like the third card being scanned. Go, go, go camera, go, go, go. Yes, do it all the way. Yes, pack's done. Man, how many boxes come, how many, is it like 24 packs come in a box? So many packs, guys, so many packs. I'm looking so forward to start building decks with these. It's gonna be great, I cannot wait for this. I'm gonna build, what, uh, what, uh, I guess for you guys, what's the first deck you want me to try and build? What's the first one that you're kind of intrigued by just by some of the cards I may have even read? Be like, wow, that card looks really cool or sounded really awesome. What what type of deck do you want me to build first? What type of deck do you want me to try and build first? Just from, from what you guys know of this game, from what you guys have seen me play, what do you want me to try and build first? Oh, amazing. I got a third Earth Shattering Charge. A third one. I'm starting to think there's not a whole lot of rares in this set because I'm getting I'm up to three of some of these rares, which is either really lucky for me and I'm just up to three and a lot of them, or there's not a whole lot of rares. And I'm gonna end up with like five or six. I mean, getting rare champions is kind of bad because I only want one of them. So if I pull like three or four, I'm like, well, what do I do with these cards now? I could give them away. I could do that. But then I'd have to go back in the pile that I just made and find them and. That's just too much time. That's just too much time. Mm -hmm. Come in. There we go. Maybe what I'll have to do is I'll, I'll find all the duplicate heroes that I have and just build ridiculously fun decks with them. So people are like, I need that card. And I'm like, well, I'm doing a giveaway. You seem pretty happy about the Sylvanth you got. Try starting there. That was my initial thought. I just wanted to know if like people were like, hold on, I know you love Sylvanth. But you guys have got to try out, like, the demons. Like, it looks really cool. I wanted to make sure I'm giving you guys the content that you want. Another. Another Incense Thunderstruck. Another, that's, like, my fourth one of this. My fourth one. And the thing is, I don't even... I don't know, own all the cards in this game. So me trying to build uh, some of, like, these top-tier decks could be a little more difficult than some other people because, again, I don't own all the cards. I do not own all of them. I own... A decent amount. Uh, I still got to craft quite a few of them. So, we will see what we can come up with. Well, fine. That card is not wanting to scan for me. That's mean. It's it's just a foil on common, so I'm not too upset by it. But, there have been two rare cards that I have that both of them not, not did not scan. So, I'm wondering if I got to, like, during my little break, after all the pack openings, when I take, like, a bathroom break here. Because, I mean, well, I'll be done opening at like 8 o'clock. It'll probably be at least another half hour of me opening these cards. And scanning them in, and then we'll play after that. Um, but, I'll probably try and scan them in during the break. See if I can get a better lighting on the cards. Because the death cards, the death cards just don't, don't like the low lighting in this room. The, uh, the black circles on the card borders just seem to blend in with the dark purples of the card. Along with this one right now, it's an unaligned card. It's like a, it's like a, a gray purple. And the, the black circles are just not scanning in it. They're just not scanning it in. No, no, just not going to happen for me, huh? Put that in the non-scannable pile. My rare is another crazed colossal squig. Once again, I got like I, I I think I have at least three of those cards now, which is good. I'm getting three of the rares. Maybe all you need to do is buy two boxes of this game, and you have all the cards, except for like a, a certain few. That are like the heroes or something like that that you just can't pull. I don't know. I'm going to laugh if there's like champions that are like super strong and super powerful. That are rare and I haven't pulled them. But I pulled like a bunch of the... Just the action cards. No champions though. Champions are where it's at. Champions of Blessings. The ones that really only want one of. If you get duplicates it's like well I can't... Unless I want to build a second deck. But digitally I don't need multiple copies of those. Unless I just want to grind gold. Which from what I've seen... Grinding gold in this game means that you play for arena, and I do love me some arena. I do. I'm not that good at arena, but I do love me some arena. I do love it. I love it. I love it. 
Speaking of which, back to back Incise Thunderstruck. Back to back. That's nuts. That's why did I get so many? Why did I have so many, guys? Is it like, is it that good of a card? They're just like, Play Fusion's trying to tell me, hey, you're gonna play this card. Okay, I don't care. You're playing Destruction, you're playing Ogres. I know you like Ogres. Ogres are fun. You like the discard mechanic? Ogres have discard. Play the card. Just play the card. Okay, you're gonna have the card, you're gonna play the card. Come on, scan for me. I mean, it's just, it's a life blast. I have like four of these things. But it's foil. I want the foil. I have no idea what the song is, but it's all. So many cards. I wonder, is there is there a filter system for uh, for sets? To figure out what I don't own in this set after I'm all done, so I can be like, oh, okay, I gotta find a way to, you know, pick and choose those cards to get. That's what I want to spend my shards on, is clearly the cards I don't own. I mean, I can just go with unowned and see what I don't have. Two rares in this one, both of them duplicates. I got another Blood Knight Charger. Another Blood Knight Charger. I think that's my third one, maybe third or fourth. And then I got another Rodigus Rainfather. Who, once again, is a rare hero that I don't need. I don't need a second one. But I got one. I'm gonna also laugh if like I don't have any duplicates of some of the most common heroes. They're just really standard for easy blessings and stuff, and I just don't have them. Just didn't pull them. Which is funny, because in this pack, I have yet to pull, like, any Sylvan. No Sylvan. All my first box was what I wanted. This one, not so much. This one has all been, you know, Nurgles and some Ogre. Well, a lot of Ogres. A lot of those uh, Ogre buffs. But, yeah, first box, first box, best box. All I'm saying. All I'm saying. First box, best box. Just keep keep putting the cards down. We're almost to the rare. Almost to the rare. Maybe not. Two rares, all duplicate. My third Prison of Grief. This is the card that literally will not scan for me. Maybe third time's the charm. Guys, it's not. It's not. I, I'm destined to never play Prison of Grief. I'm destined to never play it. And then I have a Death United. I think this is a new one. It's a blessing. Awesome that I got a new blessing. This is one clunky corner. With a heroic act, which means, it, you know, as soon as you use the action, it rotates. Deploy up to one risen unit from your discard pile, one spirit unit from your hand, and one vampire unit from your deck onto any highlighted champions. If your deck was searched this way, shuffle shuffle and rotate this afterwards. Actually, I think I, I think I did this get this one. That's probably why they had the vampire unit in that really hodgepodge deck, is for Death United. Because it does seem really dynamic where you want to play three families all at once um, to get max value out of it. But I never, I never got that quest to be revealed because the champions were so difficult to complete quests with that deck and if that deck was like yeah you know complete this quest get this awesome blessing maybe you should make it so that i can complete the quest to get that blessing i was able to complete that super quick with like my uh my grots and the sofa i was able to complete quests back to back to back but it just didn't happen just did not happen that way kind of felt bad the death one like there was there was the death one definitely felt really wonkily built i'm sure it had a theme but i never got to see the theme never once never ever did i ever get to see it ash shizzle is now hosting you with one viewer thank you very much ash shizzle for the host welcome welcome to the storm cloud everybody i hope you enjoy your time right now i have an itchy nose and we are doing a second box opening i'm showing you the rares because right now we've we've read so many duplicates and then afterwards we're going to start building some really fun savager decks uh just based on the cards that we got like I said, we got two boxes. What? Hold on. First of all, the rare card that I got is another Ravenous Gnashing Jaws. This is the third one. Third one. Maybe it's telling me I should follow that god. Second of all, uh, this foil, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep in frame because this foil, first of all, it's a Sylvanth. Awesome. Uh, it's a common. But, dude, look at the corner. Look at the corner of that. That is not printed properly. It's like the black ink got etched out. That is a misprint. That is that is valuable. A misprinted common foil. That's going right in my box of other random cards, but it's misprint, guys. Looks worn and torn. It's worn and torn. Oh. 
Oh, all I want. All I want. Rank for us. So sorry, gang. I'm out. Uh, you have to just cringe at last minute work call. It takes 45 minutes plus 10 minutes before you clock out. That's completely fine, dude. I, I completely understand. Uh, if you're at work, have a safe drive home. Uh, maybe if you're back on later, we'll see you then. But otherwise, Wranglethor, thank you very much for stopping by. Thunderfin salute to Wranglethor, everybody. He's an amazing supporter of the stream. Always love having you here, man. Great to great to have you. Sorry to see you go, but hope you hope you stop back in for the actual deck building and deck playing of this of the stream. So, drive safe if you're going home. Otherwise, try to avoid those those gosh darn phone calls, man. They're they're terrible. We got a metamorphosis. This one I think is a is a new one. And it's through a Sylvan, so that's awesome. It's a spell. Um, you may discard one seventh unit from your hand to move to one seventh unit from your deck, or and up to one seventh unit from your discard pile to your hand. That's awesome. That's awesome. I can discard a card to get one back from my graveyard and one from my hand like that. So much are so good, guys. How can I? How many times do I have to tell, explain to you that Sylvanth are so good? They're so good. They're so. The trees. They spread their seeds as trees do, and then they grow new trees. From the earth they shall rise again. 23 viewers, what happened? What is going on? Who's, who's hosting me for this, this pack reveal of this not even green screen operation I have going on? Well, I'm not even reading out the cards, I'm just talking to guys. Welcome, everybody. 38 viewers, welcome everybody. I hope you I hope you enjoy your stay. Right now we are unboxing our second box. That's why I'm not reading a whole lot of these cards. I'm just putting them in front of my iPad to scan them in so I can play the game and I'm done scanning them. We're showing off the rares because the rares are, in my opinion, some of the best cards that I can show off. Uh, but yeah, we're just, we're just discussing. We're trying to figure out what kind of decks we want to play. I'm really intrigued by the Sylvanth. I know they're, just from playing the, uh, the, the campaigns, they were really strong. I think that this is like my fifth more gassed Blightbringer. Or Harbinger, not Blightbringer. Wow. But it's like my sixth one that I pulled. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, another basic Sylvan hero. Awesome that I'm getting a, a more variety of Sylvan heroes. Almost threw that card in the ground. Woo! Almost done. I think I'm like halfway through this box now. Which means I still got like another 12 card or 12 packs to open up. Talk about. Hopefully we pull some other really fun stuff to be able to play right when the game, right when we get back into the game. But yeah, yeah. Sylvan, this seems really good. I definitely know I want to try out Ogres. Just because, like, again, I love the discard aspect. And Ogres seem like really heavy hitting, like, five, six damage. Just really, really hitting you at uh, destruction. We got another Slobbering Beast of Nurgle. Gotta love that thing. And that, oh, and we got a Foil Deluge of Nurgle. It's our second one of that. I remember that guy? Remember that guy who's like a giant? He's like, essentially like Godzilla if Godzilla were a Nurgle. He's a, he could be a Nurgle, right? I don't know. Don't judge Godzilla. He can do whatever he wants. People said he was a reptile. People said he was a kaiju. Godzilla is Godzilla, okay? He's the king of all monsters. Just have to learn to grit, grit your teeth and bear it, okay? He does what he wants. He is who he is. Also, Eleven is in that movie, and she is not bleeding her nose. So I don't know if she lost her psychic powers or what, but I feel like she can take Godzilla. If she can take that giant smoke monster in Season 2... She's a pretty good chance of taking Godzilla, in my own opinion. She's a she's a contender. And if not, she could have been a contender. She could have been a contender. Come on. Nope, not scanning. I got a pile of cards that just won't scan in it. it they're all, they're all death. They're all, uh, yeah, death. Every single one of the cards that won't scan is a death card. And I'm just like, come on, really? You're going to be that way? Why purple? Like, I understand purple thematically for death. Sure, that makes sense. Uh, first of all, uh, my my rare that I pulled was Ravenous Snatching Jaws. Got a lot of these already now. But we also pulled a rare spirit hero called Rakenor the Grim Hailer. Awesome card. It's a uh, champion wizard for spirits. When a highlighted spell deals damage, you may deal one damage to yourself to increase it by two. That feels very like what tech is for Lightseekers, right? You deal damage to yourself to deal more damage to your opponent. 
be able to just have your spells deal damage and then increase it by two by taking one damage. Spirit probably has a lot of healing, so that's A-OK -okay with me. That is A-OK -okay in my book. See, everything is very, very uh, well developed in this in this set. Uh, they, they finally hit their stride. It's not just like, hey, you know, you're going to take damage and do this. It's like, yeah, you can take damage, but with all of these different elements, all these different variables that help increase the game's play style. Help it diversify itself so that there's not just three or four decks. I'm going to get myself a wing. I'm, I'm right back. Yes, I don't know. For any of you guys, did you scan in cards? And your, like, death and unaligned cards just didn't scan in properly? Because the colors, they just couldn't read the dots? You have to almost put, like, a spotlight on this stuff? This is, this is getting out of hand. Oh, yes. I got another Divine Inspiration, that whole restarting your blessings one. That could be a really fun, just, deck to try and build. Is just really cheap questing heroes, really powerful blessings, and just run a deck just for that card. Just be able to complete the blessings, get them done dirt cheap, do them all over again. That could be interesting. Like that's that's a deck in itself. It's not a it's not a an army based deck. It's just a deck based around getting stuff done cheap and then restarting your blessings. It's, it's around an action card, kind of how all dread is around abyss tentacles, right? All good, Dread. Are these my first Warhammer Age of Sigmar? Uh, no, these are like my second ones. I did I did buy one of each of the base starters. And they each came with some booster packs along inside the base starters, as all uh, Play Fusion starter decks do. So I do have the starter decks, the physical starter decks. Uh, but this is like the first box box openings that I've, that I've done for this game. So I, I have collected a decent collection so far. Um... Just from, you know, uh, uh, Tremendous's uh, videos of scanning those um, um, tribute cards. Like, I got like five, 50 chests open just from those things, and I got a lot of packs digitally for that. So, that those videos tremendously helped me build that collection. So, if you haven't already, is, watch his videos. There's like four or five of them out, maybe even six that are like 45 minutes long. All just tribute cards. Scan them. There's like over 4,000 of them out right now. Got a Vengeful Tree Lord. Sylvanth Rare. Oh, I'm super happy about it. I think I have another one of these. As it comes into play, discard one card from your hand. XX6, damage to your opponent. When you discard one card, or when you discard a card, deal one damage to your opponent. And Sylvanth discards a lot of cards. So, like, I remember that card being really strong. And I was like, why am I dealing extra damage from discarding cards? Oh, that's right, guys. Because I can. Onto the second pile. We're getting there. We're getting there, everybody. Man, just... I really hope I don't get stuck where, like, my, for some reason my iPad just dies because it's not plugged in. I'm trying to get through this fast, too. Like, as fast as fast as possible while still being entertaining. It's a whole juggling act that I'm doing right now. I think I'm doing it okay? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. Definitely when it comes down to these, uh... Only run, got another slobbering beast of Nurgle. Once again, third one, third or fourth one of those. But uh, a lot of these action cards and uh, blessings and heroes are just uncommon and commons. They all look really strong too. They all look very, very well built, very well put together for what they're meant to do for the game for certain for certain deck archetypes. They're meant to build certain deck archetypes, and then if someone finds a way to break it by putting like two or three deck archetypes into one and it being the best thing in the world, awesome. Even better to you, man. I know that's what Hearthstone has done. Hearthstone has run, like, they tried to build, like, the discard archetype for Warlock and the demon archetype for Warlock. And it turns out the best archetype is just, like, the demon discard. And it's like, wow, that is amazing. Like, how synergistic these cards run with one another is super strong. Like, it's really interesting to see how this, uh, 
how Play Fusion themselves is like, yeah, you know, this is this is the the deck type that we wanted to build. This is exactly how we wanted it to work. Oh, you guys found a way to make it work five times better than we ever did because we didn't think about combining these three cards together as opposed to just having them all separate decks. Okay, that's that's pretty good. I'll admit that. That's pretty good. And that's, guys, is how you break a game. Got two rares. I got, like, this is my sixth one. Sixth one. You can just tell by the art. It's like the sixth one you've seen today. And then my other rare is the foil rare, which you've also seen. My second beheading strike. My second beheading strike. See, it's, it's cards like that. That it's like, yeah, you have to remove three buffs in one turn and able to do seven damage. But at the same time, I'm like, I wonder if that's possible. I wonder how frequently I can get that off. Because seven damage from an action card, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. I think we found from Lightseekers that eight damage from an action card is super good. Seven damage from an action card, if we can get it off, if we can remove three of our own buffs in one turn or something like that, or like one of ours for two of theirs and still three buffs, deal seven damage from one action card, seems like a pretty big hit. Seems like a pretty big damaging card. It's cards like that that make me, like, it's like Royal Bumbler, right? When Royal Bumbler came up, like, how can I make this work? And I tried, and I tried, and I tried, and we came up with a few different variants to make it work. Some of them good, some of them bad, some of them a lot better than the others. But we made it work. We made it work. Tremendously. My app just closed again, uh, so I gotta open it back up. Two rares. Both of them you've seen. So we'll get to those. Ah, I hit my mic. I'm sorry. I hit my mic. I'm so sorry. Come on. Throwback to Umbron Peddler. You know it. I will throw it back to Umbron Peddler all day. Umbron Peddler is an amazing deck. I love the fact that I built that. It was like, it wasn't even an original concept. It was a concept that I took from uh, Nuwan who had an amazing deck with Blaze Brute Zock. And I was like, I wonder if I can do something different that still uses the Salvager, but like, you know what card does more damage? A Swamp Peddler. Guys, how do you make Swamp Peddler work? All your combos in the discard pile? Let's do it. I got another Merciless Tree Servant. I'm really happy. I think this is more than three, so I'm awesome still with rares. And then a Foul Destiny. I think I do have one of these, but another one is, as long as it's like right up to the three mark, I'm a okay with it. Because three is right where I want those to be, unless it's the champion or a blessing. Those I only want one of, because those I can only run one of. So, awesome. We're getting right up there to the three mark with some of these rares. Obviously, way over three on a lot of them. But uh, if I if they're good cards and I run them in the game, that's just gold. My nose is just really itchy. I don't know what it is. It's like if it's cat hair just being constantly blown around the room. I don't know, but it's like the bottom of my nose always just gets like a little tickle. And keep, like right in the bridge, right there, just gotta itch it. I don't know why. It's really distracting, because I'm like, hey, you know what? And I look over and I just itch my nose. There we go. Man, as I'm looking at the art now, I'm like, Mad GB Ear. How many boosters are in a box and how many cards are in a booster? I think 24 packs come in a box. And I wanna say. 15 cards come in a booster? I have not done the math, and I'll have to count this out for you real quick. As soon as I'm done scanning this in, I'll just count real quick. Um, how many come in? But I do know that 24 packs come in a box. I do know that. I, I got another Deluge of Nurgle, the Swamp Godzilla. But one sec, let me, let me count how many cards come in here, because... Like, you get your normal uncommon, common, then rare. Then afterward, you get uh, one hero. You get one blessing of any type. Um, so you automatically get that. Then you just get one foil. So, like, you get three bonus cards uh, beyond what you would normally get in a pack. So let's see. We got... You get 13. So you get 10 base cards and then an added bonus three. So you get 13 per pack. You get, the, you get the 10 cards, which I'm sure are like one rare, three uncommon, two or three uncommon, then the rest are common. Then you get one hero, you get one blessing, and you get one foil. Uh, mostly just for drafting purposes, because if you don't have blessings or heroes in every pack, you can't draft with these cards. Um, oh, 
Oh no, you get you get six uncommon, three common, and then one rare. And then the blessing, hero, and foil all have a chance of being uncommon, common, or rare. So the rarity of those cards is all up in the air. Which is how I've pulled like three rares in one pack, is because my foil was rare, my hero that I got was rare, and then I got a rare from the pack itself. So some packs can be like winning the lottery. Some could be like, oh, I got all uncommons for the ba for the extra three cards in my pack. Feels kind of bad. Uh, are the IRL cards more expensive than digital cards? I don't know how much how much is a pack uh, digitally right now. How much is a pack digitally right now? Um, because it, it's really hard to compare like gold or in-game currency to physical money. Um, I know that packs. I think you get five cards in a pack, seventy-five purple gems. That's what the discount too, right? I think it's normally hundred purple gems. Um, and I think a hundred, I'd have to do the math. I think three, I'd have to do the math on how much purple gems cost. In my opinion, in my opinion, if you like the game, if you like the game and you're going to play it, I would, I would strongly consider invest in the physical cards because if you level up physical cards as you play them, right? If you level them up, you get gold, you get free gold, which is then used to buy the digital aspects of the game. So if you really like the game, and you're gonna play it for a long time, and you're gonna invest. You're gonna, you know, invest. I would just like buy the base starter deck. The base starter deck comes with buff removal, which you're almost always gonna use. Comes with some really decent action cards, and just really, really the basic cards for solid foundation. Um, and then afterwards, if you like the game more, you can buy booster packs of different sets. But I would, I would invest in at least the starter deck of the alignment that you like to play, so that you can level up those cards and get in-game gold. As opposed to only relying on your quests or um, like missions or leveling up the the army, because if you level up your cards, that's probably the most efficient way to get gold in the game is leveling up cards that you physically own. Um, I know in Light Seekers I own a bunch of cards, and because of it, like every time I, I play a match early on in the game, if I use a card that I don't really own, um, I'll get like 200 gold game, and that's nuts. That's like two packs just for playing one game with the deck for leveling up all those cards that I physically own. Which is the reason why I bought uh, cards for this game, too, because the best way to play the game is to own a little bit of a physical to then have those cards to level up gold and then play the digital game a lot quicker and easier. So I, I would say it's probably more bang for your buck to, to buy physical because uh, buying physical means that you can also play physical and digital because you can scan them in, whereas if you only buy digital, uh, you can only play digital. And those, those digital ones don't... Uh, are not able to be leveled up for gold or any of the voter data effect. It's just you have them digitally so you can play test them. So, not sure if that answered your question. Uh, I know it was another big of my one of my rants that I tend to do a lot, but I hope it was like, oh, okay, that makes sense type of type of thing. I got another metamorphosis, another amazing Sylvanth rare. I think it's my third one now for it, so I'm I'm really happy about it. Now I'm just trying to get through these scans as quick as possible, and I'll I'll talk to you guys now because that's awesome. Makes sense. Good. Good, I'm, I'm glad that uh, my constant babbling made sense to you. I'm, I'm no, most talking down to myself, not anyone else, but I'm just like, yeah, I tend to talk a lot, so it is what it is. But yeah, I would, I would definitely, like, it's, like I said, if you if you like the game, I mean, definitely, when you're starting out playing it, play digitally. It has a lot of really fun digital aspects. You learn the game through it as well. There's weekly campaigns, some of them more difficult than others because they're uh, meant to be, you know, difficult so that players who play the game really well at least still have a challenging aspect to it. But, I mean, it, there's there's a lot of ways to get free game and currency. Uh, Sylvan decks are really annoying to play against. That means that the Sylvan deck I want to make is going to be good. Yay! But, uh, I, I mean, I can imagine it. The Sylvan look really strong and really well developed as a whole uh, clan or army or whatever. So, I'm not surprised that they're probably one of the top tiers. And then I got, a, like, a fourth Earth Shattering Charge. So, I mean, yeah, that, uh, th I, I really want to build the Sylvan deck. That was one of the first things when I played the, the test demos for the uh, pre-release campaigns. The Sylvan deck just had me super hyped. I was like, dude, I love this aspect. I love the discard aspect of it as well. The art looks really cool. I'm always a fan of Order. I was a fan of Paladins, and Order seems really really thematic of that as well. So, Sylvan Sylvan had me really going, and I'm now that here and then it's really annoying to play against, makes me think, like, the, I chose the one that's, like, the best one to play. And I'm sure people who have played the game previously can just go ahead and be like, no, we, we saw it coming miles away as soon as we saw the cards, how well synergized the cards work together, that it's just a really well-built uh, army or whatever family or whatever you want to call it. That. 
Yeah, I can definitely see that. I pulled a lot of really strong Sylvanth uh, cards today, too, so... I'm definitely going to be building a Sylvanth. I definitely want to also build a Grot Mill. That was a fun deck to try. I really want to try an Ogre deck. Really heavy-hitting discard cards. Uh, I got another great green Sprite. Or great green Spite. All these other ones are commons. We only got one more pack, guys. One more pack. Can you believe it? I was right. We're like 10 to 8. We're doing it. We're doing it. Then I can turn my green screen back on. I can put these cards in a box and hide them from my cat before he... Before she... Well, it's not even my cat. It's my girlfriend's cat. But I feel like I've adopted her. I feel like she's she's growing on me. Gotta see if I can scan these other cards in that are not. Gotta find some good lighting. So I can get those in and play with the full collection that I have just now acquired. Uh, last pack... Not best pack. I got another slobbering beast of Nurgle. Got a lot of those. But it is what it is. It is what it is. All right, guys. That is it for the packs. Packs are all opened, all set to go. I'm going to take like a five minute break, get a water bottle, eat some more dinner. Uh, see if I can get these. These, like all these cards, did not scan, and they're all death. They're all death cards. They did not scan. I'm going to see if I can turn on a light, get better lighting, and see if I can scan those in. So, if you guys have been sticking with me, thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Uh, having some fun just doing doing pack openings. They're, they're a lot of fun. They're really, really dynamic. Just get to look at the cards. Talk to you guys about the game before we actually play the game. Boom. Green screen back on. We feel more professional now. Awesome. So, if you guys want to hang tight for one, for a few minutes... We will get this going, and we will jump over here. I have to. Uh, well, I can't open. I can't open the game up yet because I still got to scan these cards in, uh, and then play it. But we will be right back. <laughs> 